Well, a victory for opponents of the NDAA. A federal judge has ruled that provisions in the controversial law may violate our constitutional rights. President Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act back in December. The move has outraged activists that say the law is so vague it allows U.S. citizens to indefinitely be detained by the military without due process. But a group of activists sued President Obama, and yesterday the federal judge took their side. Here's part of the court order issued by Judge Catherine Forrest. It reads, quote, this court is acutely aware that preliminarily enjoining an act of Congress must be done with great caution. However, it is the responsibility of our judicial system to protect the public from acts of which Congress infringe upon constitutional rights. So the law has been blocked, at least for now. And just hours ago, an amendment was, to the NDA was presented on the House floor. Representative Andrew Smith led the fight to bar indefinite detention for terror suspects on U.S. soil. A vote on the amendment is expected to happen tomorrow. To talk more about the case and the implications of it, I'm joined now by Alexa O'Brien, a journalist for WL Central and founder of U.S. Day of Rage. Welcome to the show, Alexa. So a, a huge you. victory for you. Your reaction to the judge's ruling? Well, I'm very pleased with the judge's ruling. Um, and uh, I, I thought her ruling, uh, the 68-page ruling that she wrote, was uh, very well thought out and uh, very well reasoned. Um, it's only the beginning. <laughs> Um, and so, Alexa, you are one of seven plaintiffs in this case. Explain to us your testimony, the case you made to the judge that you had standing to sue because you feared you could be detained under the NDAA. Yes, absolutely. That is one of the clear rulings that uh, Judge uh, Forrest made, was that the plaintiffs, uh, myself included, had standing uh, to bring case against the U.S. government. Um, I had a fairly, fairly lengthy uh, affidavit and lengthy deposition. My deposition took two days. Um, and uh, of course, I also testified in court. So uh, some of the features of that was the targeting by uh, private security contractors working in conjunction with the US government um, to, to target uh, me. Um, uh, two of those firms, one uh, uh, was uh, came out in the WikiLeaks release of uh, the uh, the global intelligence files uh, related to the private security intelligence firm Stratford. Um, in one of those emails, uh, a exchange between a gentleman named Thomas Kolpecki, who is the director of operations at Fortis Investigative Research and, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Fortis uh, uh, Protective Services, uh, in an exchange with Fred Burton, who is uh, the uh, uh, head of counterterrorism at Stratford and who was also the former deputy chief of the Department of State's uh, counterterrorism division for the diplomatic security services, had been specifically tasked to tie an organization uh, that I helped found, uh, whose only avowed purpose is campaign finance reform, to uh, Islamic fundamentalists uh, and uh, uh, Saudi uh, jihadists. Uh, and there's more. Um, that's just one part of it. Um, I have had a federal agent tell me that they've seen a DHS documents uh, detailing the types of surveillance um, uh, uh, for U.S. Day of Rage. Uh, um, uh, the director of federal programs at uh, my uh, former employment uh, informed me in a business meeting that uh, uh, people in the government had been asking about me by name. Um, and so, uh, therefore, uh, because I cover Guantanamo and have spoken to individuals at the U.S. government, spoken to or about individuals that the U.S. government considers terrorists, um, I definitely had um, uh, it had a chilling effect on my uh, my uh, uh, freedom of speech. And so, these are all arguments that you made to the judge, and apparently, the judge um, sided with you. And what makes the NDAA so controversial is how vague it is. And it's vagueness, critics say, and plaintiffs, as yourself, say it's all op open to all kinds of scary possibilities. The plaintiffs fear that even reporting on terrorist suspects could be considered grounds for being detained under this law. As you said, a lot of the work that you do, that you could become under scrutiny and, and be subject to indefinite detainment. And the judge acknowledged some of the danger of the, the vague language in this bill. Can you talk about that? 
Yeah, well, I mean, you use the subjunctive tense. You said could. I mean, I was, you know, already. So, um, you know, that was already happening. I was already being targeted. Um, uh, further, you know, if you look at the war on terror and how it's fought, it's, it's fought through intelligence. And right now, um, I would say uh, that there is a, a battle uh, over the information sharing environment. Um, you know, the actions of a journalist collecting information to write a story, to do investigative work, are not very different in terms of transferable skills and the actions of a um, an intelligence uh, collector, so to speak. And so there is really clearly a uh, conflict, a competition between the intelligence sector of society and the press. And uh, up until this particular ruling, it looked like the press was losing. I mean, this is, I'm very pleased with this ruling. Of course, this is only the beginning. I mean, the council has spoken uh, out publicly in their um, discussions with the press that they are, you know, calling on uh, President Obama to, uh, you know, essentially uh, permanently uh, put an injunction on uh, this particular type of statute. Now, this is just the beginning. Um, it's a preliminary injunction. That's what's in place. And this measure is only temporary. So are you confident that it will continue to work in your favor and ultimately that, that you'll prevail? Uh, whether you know whether I prevail or not is is sort of a, a moot point in a certain sense. I mean, I want to prevail. I, I don't. Uh, I can't tell the future. Um, I am naturally taking it one step at a time. I mean, you know, uh, an Australian friend of mine was joking with me over Twitter yesterday. They said, you know, you, you've basically pushed it back to 2011. I mean, we have to really. And I'm speaking in my own person now. I'm not speaking for the other plaintiffs. But you know, we have to look at the uh, uh, indefinite detention of, uh, of prisoners of war, too, in this country. I mean, I think that there's a lot of work to be done in the United States to reestablish the rule of law and the principles of our democratic republic. Now, Alexa, an amendment was, to the NDA was presented on the House floor just moments ago um, to get rid of the provision that allows for indefinite detention on U.S. soil. What do you make of the timing? It's just one day after this this ruling. Well, you know, I'm not going to place uh, speculation here. This is what I know. You know, um, I, I read um, the. I haven't read the statute itself. You know, whether or not we out uh, we we rule out indefinite detention. You know, the question is is who is the terror suspect? I mean, in the case of the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, uh, which we brought suit. Uh, uh, towards the U.S. government for, you know, the, 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 the language of su substantially support, associated, associated forces, I mean, you know, what are those things? Uh, so, you know, being called a terror suspect by the U U.S. government is, is not a, a clear uh, um, diagnosis. And we need to understand what exactly is the U.S. government saying is a criminal act, right, firstly. Um, uh, and secondly, you know, uh, I looked at the uh, uh, Human Rights First organization sort of, uh, I guess they uh, proposed this as a, as, a, as a great idea. But, you know, I don't have a lot of trust in Human Rights First when Harold Coe, uh, you know, I was on their board of directors. This is a, a gentleman who is a proponent for drone warfare. I don't know how you connect uh, human rights and drone, uh, drone warfare together. So that's my just uh, preliminary opinion. All right. Um, Alexa, thank you for coming on the show. It'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. Again, the vote to that amendment on the House floor is expected tomorrow. And we, of course, will be keeping a close eye on the developments on this case. Alexa, thanks for coming on the show. That was Alexa O'Brien, a journalist for WL Central and founder of U.S. Day of Rage.